I'm sure you've seen plenty of tier lists before, whether it be on a forum, in the Discord server, or right here on YouTube. And I mean, it doesn't take a genius to put a bunch of different towers on a list. So what makes me more qualified than, let's say, Pooty Jones the Third? Well, Reem and Wheat, bitch. <coughs> Just to be clear, this is essentially what each tier means, and also, if two towers are in the same tier, then it means they're basically around as good as each other. But with that out of the way, let's begin, gamers. Starting in D tier, we have Trapper, and I mean, I can make a whole video about why this thing sucks. It's got low damage, it's not very cost efficient, it gets outperformed by basically every tower in the game. I mean, why would you want to get a Trapper to stop a leak that you could have just stomped in the first place? The only time, and I really mean the only time that Trapper is even remotely useful is if you're exclusively using close range towers. But why would you be doing that? Please don't waste your tokens on this. Just go buy, like, a sandwich or something. The only other tower in D tier is Slinger. Uh, kind of telling that Trapper is in the same tier as the tower intentionally made to be bad, but whatever. Now, in all fairness, Slinger does have good range and fire rates for its cost, and it also gets flying detection on top of which is cool. But the only problem is the abysmally low DPS. I mean, best case scenario, you're getting, like, 9 damage per second out of this thing. Just don't even bother. Please. Moving on to C tier, we have Crossbower. I honestly forget this tower exists with how little people use it, which is not to say that it's bad or anything. It is good crowd control if you can find a good spawn for it. Especially considering how early you can get one down. It just doesn't deal enough damage to make a difference outside of early game is all. Definitely not the worst tower, but far from being the best. Tech Plate is pretty good for a melee tower. His crowd control and cheap cost makes him perfect for early game. And at max level, he's a great tank killer. Only problem is he's a melee tower. For that alone, he's stuck in C tier. Sorry. Gunslinger suffers from a similar problem as Tech Blade, where he provides early game crowd control, looks cool, he's easy to get, but has garbage range. Thankfully, Tom Patton fixes this problem by giving him over double the range he starts with and spawning mercenaries, but. Gunslinger just sort of falls off damage-wise in late game. I don't know. It has its niche uses, but just don't expect too much out of this thing. Freezer is interesting because it's either really good or practically useless. It can completely demolish early game when paired with the right towers, but by mid game, everything gets freeze resistance. Un until like late game expert for some reason. Why are these super late enemies weak to freezing? Why? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, moving on to B tier, Sharpshooter is a great generalist. Bottom path's cheap crowd control makes it great for early game, while Tom path just straight up does a lot of damage. This, on top of the fact it has flying detection, makes it great for just about all the normal and hard mode. But this thing sucks in expert mode. I don't know if it has anything to do with like defense piercing or immunities or anything like that, but it just completely falls off after Berserker. I mean, hey, it might have something to do with the fact that Sniper completely outperforms Sharpshooter in nearly every way, but I might just make that into its own video. Demo Man is the epitome of crowd control. The high defense piercing makes it surprisingly good for expert mode, especially during early game. Like a lot of towers, it's nowhere near as useful around late game, but they don't hard to have. They're just generally good against everything that isn't flying or tanky. I'd recommend it if you need some crowd control, since, you know, that's like the whole point of the tower. Uh, anyways, moving on to A tier, we have Vulcan. There's not a whole lot to say about Vulcans other than they do a lot of damage really quickly. Their only real flaw is the lack of flying detection and like, maybe the placement limit? But other than that, it's a really efficient tower. I don't really know what else to say other than equip it if you want to do more damage. I guess. Mechanic is a great tower for mid game. The different types of turns he builds makes him very good in a ton of different situations. Most notable are the Teslas, which stun and deal great crowd control. He'd be a lot better if the shield bubble actually, like, blocked stuns instead of, you know, doing nothing, so maybe if they fixed that, this tower would go up a tier. Elite is the best example of a tower that's a specialist. What do I mean by that? Well, in most cases, he's just alright. Not that much better than a Vulcan. The flight detection is cool, but it just gets sort of counteracted by the whole overheat mechanic. So, why is this thing in A tier? Well, it's just one stat that puts this tower up as high as it is. That's the triple damage to shields, baby. Just think about it like this, right? 
top path elite, it normally does like 50 damage per second, right? Not that good for how much it costs, but multiply it by three. You know how to multiply, right? No, it's fine. Don't worry about that. I did the math for you, see? Basically, against shields, a top path elite can do like 150 damage per second. And even if you're a loser and you only like playing on normal and hard mode where there aren't as many shields, bottom path still exists. I mean, it, does, it shoots out a, a giant laser ball. Like, that's almost enough to destroy the Volt Master in one hit. In one hit, even. In one hit. And above all else, it. I mean, it just looks cool. I mean, what do you want me to say? I'm just speaking the truth here. Businessman's interesting because the only reason it's so high on this list is because of another tower, but. I'll get to that later. It's a really good option if you want to farm some money in early game without, you know, risking it all on randoms. The damage it deals isn't that bad either. I mean, this is a really great tower for early game, but that's kind of it. The whole money making thing gets easily replaced by market by mid game, and I mean, I'm going to be honest, even in early game, you have better options for defense. Thankfully, Recon Base exists. I've already gone into depth about this enough times, so to be brief... <sighs> so yeah, that's basically it. As long as you're using this thing with Recon Base, you can get a lot of value out of it. Market is interesting because it's only as good as the person using it. If you know... <laughs> then you can get a lot of value out of this thing really quickly. For example, you can use this in early game to get down a late game tower like Electricizer to take care of like Berserker or something, I guess. To me, it feels like the meta with market is always changing and I'd love to get in more depth about it, but you know, time and a place. I got a business meeting at seven, so you know, I'm gonna have to wrap this up. Ending off A tier is Sniper. Sniper is arguably the best tower for early game tanks. It's got a really low fire rate, but the damage and range more than make up for it. Not to mention the fact that it has flying detection and full defense piercing. Unlike a lot of other towers, Sniper is still usable in late game. It's a good choice if you've ran out of towers to upgrade, or if you don't have anything else to focus on in late game. It's also better than Shermshooter in just about every way, so... Alright, now that we've gotten all those inferior towers out of the way, we can talk about the ones that really matter. The S tier towers, ooh. Surveyor is the newest tower, so general opinion on it is still pretty mixed, but I personally think this tower is incredible. It is the ultimate jack of all trades. Like, it does everything. It's got high fire rate, huge range, flying detection, it's useful for the entire game, and later on it can be used as a support tower. What else can this thing do? Soft lock the entire game. Okay, so obviously soft locking the entire game is not an intentional feature, so this is gonna get fixed soon, right? Right? I don't know, just make sure your game doesn't crash while you're using this thing and you'll be fine, probably. Oh, and also, uh, everyone keeps saying this thing looks like a Fortnite skin, but personally, I think it looks more like the security guard from Half-Life, so uh, yeah. Recon base is a crazy good tower. It takes all the boxes of what makes a tower good. Ghouls carry an early game, privates demolish a berserker, missile trucks provide good air defense, tanks destroy everything, fire and team solve lets you do damage without dropping a fortune, and the level 5 upgrades make this thing crazy in late game. I mean, it's incredibly expensive, but you get what you pay for with this tower. Unlike some others. Bugler is interesting because as the only fully support tower, it's only as good as the towers that you pair it with. If those towers are really good though, you can cause some serious carnage. The fire rate and range buffs can help cover up some of the flaws of other towers, and the abilities are a must have for some boss fights. Practically require that you bring this thing in expert mode to deal with the overlord amplifiers. Even though this thing gets nerfed in like practically every update, it still goes hard. S tier, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Light Beamer is interesting in how different the top and bottom path is. Top path is great for crowd control, while bottom path is great against tanks. This makes the tower very versatile, but more importantly than that, it does a bunch of damage. If you can find a spot that takes advantage of top path's pierce, you can do insane amounts of damage. And I mean, bottom path is just generally good. Like, just look at these numbers. Look at them. Look at them! Outside of early game, Light Beamer goes hard in just about any scenario. Last on the list is Electricizer. This tower takes the idea of a sniper and cranks it up to 11. 
usually has enough range to cover the entire map and does the most damage per shot out of anything in the game. Okay, that's technically not true. There's a couple of other things to do more damage, but you get the idea. It's not really good against hordes of enemies, but against tanks, this thing goes hard. All I'm saying is if you try and join in my lobby without an electrizer, I'm going to find you. Anyways, that's the entire video. Make sure to give me all your money, please, please. Uh, hey guys, so I was I was just uh, editing the video, and I noticed that I was wrong about the slinger, you guys. It's actually the best tower in the game. Uh, better than Electrizer, even. Uh, why is it so good, you may be asking? It just is. I would give it a 10 tower blitz tokens out of 5. Okay, okay, I said it. Can you please leave now? Oh my goodness gracious, I'm gonna get my mind off of that real quick by answering the comment of the week. Take it away, M. Thanks, Grip Fist. I'm coming to you live from inside your walls. Not Yes says, Your videos are actually helpful! And funny. But I didn't know B-Man decreased recon timer on units?! Well, first of all, no need to yell. I'm standing right here. And second of all, yes. Businessmen do reduce the timer on recon base units. You can get a 30% reduction on all ability cooldowns with 6 top path businessmen. Spawning units counts as an ability, so recon base and top path gunslingers heavily benefit from this buff. So is bugler, since it's a lot easier to chain snare drums, but you know, I'll, I'll talk about that in depth in like 2 years, don't worry. Alright, well that's about all I have to say this time. If you disagree with anything that I have to say, then you're dead to me. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye!